Hey y'all, today's video is going to be a more in-depth, thorough review of Write By Number. Let's jump into it. First of all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Kayla. I am a second generation homeschool mom, a homeschool graduate who's now homeschooling my daughters. I currently have a fourth grader and a first grader, as well as a toddler and a baby girl on the way, arriving in April. I love to chat all things homeschool on this channel. I specifically share mostly secular resources here, and I also just like to share moments of motherhood and our day-to-day -day life. So if any of that interests you, I hope you'll consider sticking around. Today we're going to be looking at Write by Number, which is a writing program that we have been using in our home school since August of 2023. It is now January 2024. So we have a few months of using this program under our belt. I already made a really thorough flip through and overview of this program for you guys. If you've not yet watched that video, I highly recommend that you do that first and then head back over to this video. Over in that video, I explain all of the ins and outs of how the curriculum works. I talk about the credentials of the author, and I show you guys a really in-depth look inside both the student book and the teacher's book. So in today's video, we're not really going to look at the ins and outs of Write by Number. Instead, I'm going to share reasons why we personally are loving this writing program, and I'm also going to share some things for you to consider as far as why it might not be a great fit for you or your kiddo. I'll also share just some general updates of how we're using this, and I will turn the camera around to show you some recent work that my fourth grader did with Write by Number so that you can kind of see how it actually is getting implemented in our homeschool. First, why I love Write by Number. I hesitate to say that I have found the perfect curriculum, in any subject, this should go without saying, but there is no perfect curricula. There is no program or resource that's going to just be the best fit for every family or for every child. The reason we have so many options is because we need them. There's so many different teaching styles, learning styles, homeschool styles, and it's a very good thing that we have lots of options we can choose from. So I won't say that Write by Number is the perfect writing curriculum. What I will say is that at this moment in time, it feels like Write by Number is the perfect writing curriculum for us and for my kids. And I am so just over the moon about that because I looked high and low for a writing program that we would enjoy and that would work for well over a year. It could have been two years. Honestly, I lost track, but I looked at so many different programs. I chatted with so many homeschool mama pals of mine. I looked at so many YouTube reviews. I really wanted to get this right because writing is important. It's a foundational skill that I think everyone should have. On top of that, we were facing some very specific struggles with writing in our homeschool. And so I'm beyond relieved that we discovered Write by Number, that I was told about it, thankfully, by a lovely homeschool mama pal of mine on Instagram, and that so far it has just worked phenomenally for us. Now, I have every intention of using Write by Number with both of my homeschoolers. So I have a daughter in fourth grade and a daughter in first grade. I could very easily have both of them using this program right now. But I kind of wanted to ease in with only using it with my fourth grader first, since one, the writing expectations for her age and grade level are much higher than her younger sisters. And I wanted to really make sure we were taking advantage of this critical time in her upper elementary years to focus on writing, especially after already dealing with some struggles with her in the past with other programs and just with writing in general. And the second reason is I wanted to make sure that I understood this program really well and that I felt really comfortable teaching it and using it with one student before I jumped into using it with two students. So for the last few months, I've been using Write by Number with my fourth grader. In that time, she went through 
all of stage one, stage two, stage three, and just recently has started on stage four. My first grader is still working on some foundational skills that I would like to see her advance a little bit more in before I start her in Write by Number, specifically handwriting and writing letters and numbers backwards at times. I do have every intention of starting my first grader in Write by Number as well very soon, probably within the next few weeks or months. Which leads me to the first reason why I love Write by Number. It's two books. It's a teacher book and a student book. And these two books alone carry you through multiple years of instruction and potentially with multiple kiddos. A lot of people are really put off by the price tag, so much so that if you go to Write by Numbers website, in their frequently asked questions section, they actually address why is Write by Numbers so expensive? Because clearly a lot of people are wondering about that. It's about $300 for just these two books, which might seem like an astronomical price. That's crazy, $300 for two books. I personally think that that price now after using the program, I think it's actually very reasonable. And I did pay for these books out of my own pocket. I don't currently have an affiliate partnership or any sort of sponsorship with Write by Number. The books themselves are fantastic quality. I have no doubt in my mind that these books will withstand lots of use and abuse and we will still have these on our shelf in great condition in a decade, in 20 years, I have no doubt in my mind that they can withstand that amount of use. But also, now that I have experience using the program and I know that it's a great fit for us and that I can use it with both of my girls, that just makes the price even more reasonable. So let's just do a little math breakdown. I started with my oldest in fourth grade. Let's say that she uses Write by Number from fourth grade to 12th grade. That's eight years of use. $300 just about divided up over eight years of use is less than $40 per year of her using it. If I'm also using it with my younger daughter, then that splits that in half. Now I'm only paying $20 per year per kid. So you get the idea. The more time you're using this program and the more kiddos you're using it with, the more and more affordable it becomes, especially compared to a lot of really popular writing and grammar programs. Some of them are charging upwards of $180 for one school year for one level. So $300 for several years and multiple kiddos is sounding better all the time. The next reason why I am loving Write by Number is I find that the text is just so easy to read in both the teacher's book and the student book. I have used a lot of curricula and resources, and some of it is so text heavy, so overly complicated. It's very easy to get lost. Write by Number is literally the polar opposite. It's so concise, it's so to the point, and it's very clear and easy to understand. I really appreciate that they give you exactly the information that you need to know without overwhelming you with details. I just can't say enough good things about the actual writing and design that went into this program. I think it's so well done. The next thing that I have really loved about Write by Number is the time investment involved. There's a lot of beautiful homeschool resources out there that I would love to use. Once I actually see how much time they are expecting you to devote to this one area or one subject, I'm out. Like, I just know that's not going to work for us. That's not going to work for our lifestyle. It's not going to help us to meet all of the goals and learn about the wide range of subjects that I want to cover in our homeschool. I can tell that the author of Write by Number was a homeschool mom to five children because she gets it. She's really designed this program to where you can invest as much time into it or as little time into it as you really need. And I so appreciate that. It feels very adaptable. In the first three stages of Write by Number, they suggest using about 15 minutes of each day to work on a writing assignment for that particular stage that your child is working on. Once you get to stage four and beyond, they're going to actually just have a list of assignments 
for that particular stage. So you have a lot of flexibility as far as how you schedule out those assignments. So for us personally, I don't actually pull it out daily, even though I know that was the recommendation for the first three stages. I felt pretty comfortable falling into a rhythm of using Write by Number with her around once or twice a week. And I feel like that's been perfect for her. She's still making steady advancement with the program, but she also doesn't feel overwhelmed by having to do a lot of writing every single day. I want to make sure that her schedule is spread as evenly as possible so that we can touch on all the different language arts skills and all the other subjects and schoolwork that she has without feeling like we need to do everything every day. The final reason that I am loving Write by Number is that I can implement this writing program across all of our school subjects and content areas. Reading the writing revolution and looking at a lot of research on how we teach literacy, how we teach English language arts, I really became convinced that it was crucially important to make sure that writing was involved in every area of your learning. So in science, in history, in social studies, geography, whatever we're learning about, we should have some writing incorporated in it. A lot of the curricula that I choose already has a little bit of writing incorporated. Our science curriculum might have some areas where they expect the children to do written responses to a question. Our history curriculum includes copy work and oral narration or written narration, depending on the skill level of the child. However, in addition to that, my children need to learn how to write. And as much as I love copy work and narration, and as much as I love free creative writing, I know that that's not quite enough, or at least it wasn't enough for us. My kiddo still needed more explicit direction on how to formulate her thoughts in a coherent and grammatically correct easy to read fashion. And she really needed writing instruction that was going to help take the pressure off and give her something specific and prescriptive to follow so that she wouldn't feel like she was coming up with so much of it on her own. The flip side of that is a lot of writing programs that are explicit and scaffolded and prescriptive tend to force feed you content and subject matter to write about. So they might say, read this paragraph, and then your assignment is to rewrite the paragraph in your own words or summarize what you just read. Or it might just be that you are editing and rewriting a lot of text that's already been written. So it would just be like random reading samples about koalas or Abraham Lincoln. And then my daughter would read that content. She would look for grammatical errors in what she was reading or she would rewrite it in her own words. I hope I'm making sense, but basically the content and the subject matter was provided and prescribed in a lot of these other resources. Whereas Write by Number doesn't give you any content or subject matter. The way the program is designed is this is the formula, this is the type of sentence or the type of paragraph we are expecting, Here's a dozen or 20 examples of what that can look like. Go write about anything. That open-endedness allows me to create writing assignments based on what I know we're already covering in our homeschool. It also allows my daughter to be creative and write about any subject matter she would like to write about while still fulfilling her assignments for school with Write by Number. Additionally, if we're having kind of a rough week at our homeschool and I am feeling less than inspired about giving her any particular topics to write about, I can always ask her, hey, do you want to write about that TV show that you just watched or that chapter book that you just read or the weekend you just had at Nana's house. So really Write by Number gives us a lot of open-ended freedom to write about anything and everything and to be able to incorporate writing across our other homeschool subjects if and when we want to. Overall, I have just found this program to be so easy to use, so easily adaptable both to our schedule and our particular needs. Also, I can see how easy it would be to adapt this to different students who are at different ages and different skill levels. A couple more things that I just wanted to update because I did actually watch my flip through video 
to remind myself of what I've already covered. And I know that I showed comparison between the teacher's book and the student's book, but I really wanted to make it clear now after using the program, I definitely think you need both. My fourth grader is able to read the student text all by herself. I generally have her read it out loud to me at least the first time that we are being introduced to a new stage covering new material. And then she always has it on hand if she needs to go back and reference it at any point. I have not found myself relying too heavily on any of the scripting in the teacher's book. However, I really find it helpful to look at all of the goals and evaluation checklists, as well as the differentiation between dependent learners and independent learners. Also, I would be lost without the answer key for the worksheets in the back. I'm sure I could figure out the answers on my own, but it would be a lot more time and a lot more of a headache. So I definitely recommend having the teacher's book and the student book. Even though I'm planning on using this program with multiple kids, I still only have one student book. I have no intention of buying any more student books. I feel like this will work great for my kiddos to share. There's really no reason that your kiddo would need to write in or mark up this book. We use sticky notes if we need to make any notations or mark any pages. So yeah, I'm just planning on having my girls share this one book. I don't think it will be a problem at all. Now really quickly, I just wanna go through some things that you might wanna consider and possible reasons why Write by Number would not be a good fit for your family or your child. The first reason why this might not be the best fit is it's a little boring, to be honest. And that might just be partially because Write by Number does not provide any subject material or content for the writing program. But yeah, there's not a lot of interesting stuff in there. Your kiddo is not going to necessarily enjoy reading the student text. You might get some resistance. You might get some pushback. I know I've talked to some families who tried it out and their kiddo just really hated it. And the author of Write by Number actually addresses this in the introduction of the teacher's book, which I think is hilarious. But she literally says like, this is not going to be fun necessarily. Writing is a skill. It's going to feel challenging at times as you develop that skill. I am fully in the camp of not everything we do in our homeschool has to be fun or magical. Of course, I want us to have fun. I want my kids to be engaged. I want them to be interested. But I also understand that there are some things we have to learn that might not be our favorite things and that might not be the most fun. If you feel like your kiddo really benefits from more of a game element or from video instruction or from a writing program that has a lot of illustrations and a lot of story elements and a lot of interesting content that they are reading about and then writing about, write by number is probably not gonna be the best fit for you. The second thing to consider Another reason why this might not be the best fit for your family is if you're the type of homeschooler who likes to switch up your curriculum frequently. Maybe you switch curricula throughout the year or maybe you just like to try new things every year. There is no shame in that game. I'm a curriculum junkie. I know how it is. There's always something shiny and new and flashy that we want to try that looks like fun, looks like it's going to solve all of our homeschool problems whatever the case may be. But if you know that about yourself, it might not be the best idea to invest $300 plus into these two books, which are only going to give you your money's worth if you use them over an extended period of time and or with multiple kids. So if you feel like you or your kiddo gets bored with curricula really easily and you're always on to a new shiny thing, then maybe skip right by number. I think you really need to use it for an extended period of time, multiple years, to be able to not only get your money's worth, but also get the full benefit of the program since each stage really builds on the last and it is a mastery-based program. You really need to invest that time with it. One last thing to consider, right by number might not be the best fit for you if you don't want to have to come up with content for your child to write about. Or if you're depending on your child to come up with the content 
and they're just not that kid. If you already feel like you have a full plate and you really need to outsource writing completely, you need the book or the video or the tutor to be able to give the writing assignments and to tell your child how to write and what to write about, write by number is not going to work for you. If your child consistently gets overwhelmed by open-ended assignments, they tend to just draw a complete blank when they have an empty sheet of paper in front of them. They get really anxious and overwhelmed about the idea of what do I write about? Write by number might not be a great fit for that type of kid. It could work for that type of kid as long as you, the parent or instructor, are willing to have the subject matter assigned in advance. But if you're not going to be able to come up with subject matter and content for them to write about and your child consistently draws a blank, I would say write by number is just probably not going to work for you. And you really need to look at a program that's going to be even more prescriptive and provide the subject matter for you. I also just wanna remind you guys that Write by Number does offer a 14 day free trial on their website. I highly recommend that you always take advantage of all the free trials. They can be super helpful in helping you decide if something's going to be a good fit before you make a big investment. All right, so now I'm going to flip the camera around and just show you some recent work that we did with Write by Number. With my daughter's permission, I'm showing her writing. really wanted to show you guys an example of what this actually looks like in real life. So here we go. Okay, so with my fourth grader, she has worked through stage one, stage two, stage three. She just recently got to stage four. So let me show you how we started with stage four. This is the student text. This is my teacher book over here. So what I will typically do first when we are starting a new stage is the night before, the day before, a few days before, I will try to prepare by reading through this on my own. That way I'm super familiar with what the expectations, the objectives, the goals are for this stage. We had a pretty simple transition in this case to stage four, because we're using the same pattern paragraph, the one, two, three, two, three, that we had already been working on to mastery in stage three. So there wasn't a whole lot of new information to learn. The difference is here in stage four, we are avoiding expletive construction. So we're not using there is, there are, there was, or there were in our paragraph, in our sentences. This is the part that I always find the most helpful, this summary with the goals and a summary for each goal. So in stage four, our goals are, we want our students to think of new ways to construct sentences while still conveying the same meaning. And I really like this part here. It says some students naturally develop more complicated sentence structure in their writing as they are exposed to those structures in their reading, but many students do not. This to me sums up why I don't personally rely solely on copy work and dictation for writing instruction. I think that there's definitely a place for copy work and dictation. I think they're valuable tools. But for us, I could not rely on those exclusively and expect that my daughter was just naturally going to pick up on how to write. So I really appreciate that with Write by Number, they're building incrementally more complex sentence structures as you go through the program. She compares it to asking a basketball player to dribble with their left hand. They know how to dribble. They don't prefer to dribble with their left hand. They prefer things to be easy and simple. This is to push them outside of their comfort zone just that much, just a little bit. The second goal was to incorporate grammatical knowledge into their writing. So this is just reiterating the point that we don't want grammar to be memorizing facts totally separate in isolation outside of their writing. We want our kids to use their grammatical knowledge and apply it directly into their writing. We don't want them to just write how they talk. And goal three is teach students that writing ideas in a different way is effective. 
One of the hardest things to teach in writing is that the first thing students write on the page is not necessarily ideal. This whole idea that you might have to discard an entire sentence or paragraph and rewrite it in a better way can be unfathomable to many young and old writers. In this stage, students will begin to get used to the idea of reimagining word order to create the same meaning. So we really want to stretch our kids' ability to be able to edit and rewrite and reimagine their writing over and over again, even though that can be painful at first. To have to agree that you might have not written it the best way and that you could improve on how you wrote it, it hurts the ego for all of us. But it's a critical skill that I really appreciate right by number addressing. Also in the teacher's guide, there's some sentence examples here of what that can look like. So the original sentence is, there are two new cars that I want for my birthday. This is clearly a first power sentence. We've fixed it by taking out that expletive construction and making it, I want two new cars for my birthday. So we took out the there are, we switched some wording around, but the meaning is the same. The next example is there is a soda that I drink every day, but we've changed it and corrected it, took out the expletive construction. I drink Coke every day. So we're giving the same message. We're actually providing even more detail. And we took out those unnecessary words. So then I went ahead and read this how to teach section, which just provides some general directions. I don't use this exactly as written. They suggest that you have a notebook exclusively devoted to write by number. We do not. We use school nest grade level notebooks for really all of our subjects and all of our writing across the board. I also use them as like portfolios. I glue in worksheets. I, I keep everything as much as I can fit in that one notebook. So we will be using our same notebook for the write by number assignment as we use for everything else. And then she does give you the option of using a pencil and then simply erasing mistakes or rewriting the paragraph all together after you edit. And she explains some reason behind each of those methods. This is a little bit different from stage three, where she strongly recommended using pen and not allowing erasures. I think because stage four is building directly off of the same paragraph pattern we mastered in stage three, but we're practicing rewording that's why she's saying, yeah, go ahead, let them use a pencil, let them erase, because they might be having to erase a lot if they're moving words around over and over and over. The next thing that I pay extra attention to is the assignments. Now, for stage four, we have five assignments. The first is to complete worksheet 11 on expletive construction. The second is to write 10 first power sentences that do not begin with there is, are, was, or were. So at this point, we're not even at the full paragraph yet. We're just practicing that introductory sentence without the expletive construction. Assignment three is find a paragraph that you wrote in stage three that has expletive construction and rewrite it for stage four. So they're taking something they've already previously written and completely rearranging it and writing it in a new way. And then for stage four, we finally get to a completely new original paragraph following that one, two, three, two, three pattern without expletive construction. And then assignment five is repeat assignment four until you're ready to move on. Basically write as many of these paragraphs as necessary until your kiddo has shown mastery based on your evaluation, based on when to move to stage five, and then you do. So for this stage, I decided that I definitely wanted Eleanor to do the worksheet on expletive construction so that she could understand what that even is, what she's looking to avoid. I let her skip assignment two because I just felt like it probably wasn't necessary as long as she understood what she was looking for. And I also let her skip assignment three 
That's not to say that we won't do this. We will probably go back and do this. But she was really excited to write an original paragraph this week. So I said, we'll do the worksheet. We'll do assignment four. And then maybe we'll come back and revisit assignment three next week or the following week. So after reading this and kind of getting familiar with what I was actually going to have her do, I then had her read the student portion to me aloud. So we sat down and she just read all of this. It's written directly to the student, very user-friendly, super easy for her to read. When she got to this part, she was a little bit confused because we haven't done sentence diagramming yet, and they don't really explain what it is. They're just kind of showing it as an example. So I kind of just told her, like, this is one way of breaking up a sentence. We'll be practicing this more later. Don't worry about it right now. And then that was fine. So she read through all of this. She read this little pitfall box, which has some more helpful information. And then she read the examples of fixing expletive construction. These are completely different than the examples in my teacher's book, so it's helpful to have both. Then we went to the student samples. So she was able to read through these to see some ideas of what other kids have written. Then we went to the assignment list. I told her that I definitely wanted her to do the worksheet. So all the worksheets are in the back of the student book. And then I have the answer key in the teacher's book. We have like a short little lesson here that she was able to read with me. It teaches what expletive construction is, why we want to try to avoid it, and then some examples. And then she has a list here of 10 sentences. And it just says, on a separate sheet of paper, rewrite each sentence without there is, are, was, or were, that expletive construction. So in her notebook here, I actually didn't have her write all 10 sentences. I had her pick a few and she rewrote them here. I checked them with my answer key and my teacher's guide. Boom, done. So this is how we do the worksheets. She actually has two worksheets on this page. She did worksheet six on apostrophes on this bottom section and then worksheet 11 up here. We had accidentally skipped worksheet six and I wanted her to practice with that again. So we just had her do that. The worksheet probably took her about 15 minutes. And then from here, she jumped into actually planning out her paragraph. Now I had given her a few ideas for what she could write about this week if she so chose. These are just some things that we have been covering in history and in science. So I have Joan of Arc, Marie Curie, Robin Hood, King Arthur, and the Black Death. And I said, hey, do any of these appeal to you? Do you want to do your write by number assignment about any of these topics? Or do you have something else that you really are excited to write about? she immediately chose Marie Curie. She was like, I definitely want to write about Marie Curie. This is something that is not really taught or required in Write by Number, but I've noticed that she herself just likes to do this. She got a scratch piece of paper and she wanted to list her things that she was writing about Marie Curie and then the details. In the pattern that she's working on for stage four, She's really only supposed to be listing two things and providing two details, one for each of those. She said, Mom, can I please make it three things instead? There's too many to choose just two. Who am I to limit her writing? So I said, of course you can make it three things. Just follow the same pattern and provide a detail for each thing. So this is her way of sort of organizing her thoughts. So she called this her pre-writing process, which I love. And again, this is not something that Write by Number taught her. This is just something that she's picked up from a variety of resources we've used. She just finds it helpful to gather her thoughts before jumping in and writing the actual sentences. This is her rough draft that we went through and edited. For the most part, her spelling and handwriting is pretty good. You can see she kind of self-corrected a few times. There were a few little punctuation things that we needed to edit, but most of the editing for this assignment was actually just wording, changing the way that she was phrasing something. And then this is her final 
version. She was super proud of this. I was super proud of her because I think this is her best writing that she's done all year. So you can see that she still starts with that first power sentence. We learned three things about Marie Curie in science this week. To begin with, I learned that she was the first person to discover radium. So that's a second power sentence. Then our third power, which is a detail about that, she used a device that her husband invented to measure the amount of radium that she had found. Then we have another second power sentence. Then she perceived small amounts of radium in pitch blend. Our second third power sentence, it took her almost four years to get only a tenth of a gram of radium to prove to the world that she was right. And then she added, this is in addition to the pattern, a third second power sentence. Eventually, she and her husband got sick and died from their exposure to radium. And then a third, third power sentence, we still appreciate her work and dedication today. So my daughter is almost 10 and in the fourth grade. And this is the best writing that she has ever composed completely on her own. So with us reading the student text, doing the worksheet, doing the pre-writing plan, the draft, the paragraph, this was basically a whole week's worth of work. We spread this out over four days. So on each of those days, she's only working on this for about 15 to 30 minutes max. And this week was actually kind of unique because we have weeks where we don't even really touch write by number every day. We might only pull it out once. And I fully expect that next week will be like that because after we read the student text and she kind of gets her feet wet with the stage, she doesn't have to do all of that reading over and over and over. So next week, I can just say, hey, we're going to do a stage four, one, two, three, two, three paragraph again. Remember, we did that last week. And I think this time I do want you to rewrite a stage three paragraph that you already have in your notebook. And then I can just schedule a specific day or two of the week for her to work on that. So it becomes easier and easier. And you're having to open your book less and less frequently the more that you practice with each stage and get more and more familiar with what is being asked of you. You're investing the most amount of time when you're introducing a new stage and a new concept. But after that, the amount of time you're investing continues to decrease and decrease until you reach mastery and you're ready to start all over again with a new stage. I'll definitely have her do a few more stage four paragraphs before letting her move on. We'll linger in this stage for a while until I'm really sure that she's gotten the hang of it. So that is how we've been using Write by Number this year. I really hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you have any questions at all, drop them below, DM me on Instagram. I'm always happy to chat with you guys and try to answer your questions. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. I know I have several curricula reviews coming out in the next few weeks. So if you like those, make sure you stay tuned. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye for now.